My name is Henry Hill. I'm going to be analyzing the female body in Orthodox Christianity by examining the female empress Irene of Byzantium. The Byzantine state in 800 CE, uh, though perhaps a fragment of its Roman predecessor, was vast on a scale profound to the medieval mind. It was very localized, it was very rural, and it was very Christian. Citizens could not expect a lot of mobility. This made imperial coinage uh, really invaluable. It was used throughout the empire, which made an important universalizing feature uh, to connect citizens with their government and disseminate imperial imagery presenting the current emperor as legitimate. So what is the legitimate empire? Historian Anthony Caldellus describes the Byzantine emperor as God's vice regent on earth, connecting the people to their God. And failing this, he was susceptible to coups, riots, and civil wars, which plagued the empire throughout its history. What made an emperor legitimate in Byzantium? It all comes down to divine approval. And uh, this can be signaled in a few ways. First of all, success on the battlefield is uh, a good indicator that God is in your court. Uh, religious piety, a religious policy that uh, your citizens agree with and believe in, is very important. And dynastic continuity. If you have a long line of ancestors in the purple, that certainly helps uh, make it seem like God has made you for a role. So we see this in the coinage. Um, Justinian II depicts himself in his loros, in his traditional uh, military regalia. He also uh, paints himself opposite Christ, uh, showing his religious piety. And in another coin, Irene and Constantine VI are uh, juxtaposed with their ancestors, their imperial ancestors, the Isaurian dynasty, who have ruled for uh, decades before them. So these elements make female power very difficult. Uh, the female body in Christianity and in Byzantium was uh, marked and was seen as weak and second to men. Uh, this precluded them from leading troops, from founding dynasties. A woman with a, an heir would be seen as secondary to that heir, and a woman without one would be seen as unstable. And they uh, were not seen as close to God, uh, at least not as men were. This is shown in Christian symbology, where throughout uh, biblical stories, uh, men can communicate directly with God, um, e.g. Moses here, and uh, even Mary, the mother of God, is relegated to communication via the angel Gabriel. So the Empress Irene came to power around 780 CE uh, as uh, reigning in the name of her son, Constantine VI. She faced opposition on account of her sex, uh, but gained public popularity defending religious icons which the people could worship. Irene's early coins uh, almost hide her among the pantheon of her Isaurian ancestors uh, and place her next to her son, Constantine VI. However, uh, even at this point, Irene is to some extent legitimized by masculinizing her. She is placed in the same loros that uh, Justinian II was in, the military regalia, uh, even though she likely uh, never wore this. Uh, she's also placed uh, in contrast with uh, other Isaurians who are typically depicted in robes, not this military uh, traditional attire. This uh, shows her strength. Um, in contrast to other women on Byzantine coins, uh, Irene on the left here is uh, physically masculinized. She has a very strong jawline, uh, and you can see that contrast on the right with other women. Uh, she's also given very broad shoulders. She has a wide footprint, taking up almost half the coin whereas these two women on the right uh, take up uh, a fraction of that width. Irene's late coins attempt to do the same thing, uh, similarly masculinizing her with that broad jawline and broad shoulders. Um, but they also attempt to compensate for her sex uh, by displaying her religious piety. In an unprecedented move, she places herself alone on the front and back of the coin, um, away from her imperial ancestors essentially dodging the dynastic question, forgetting her son and allowing her to rule in her own right. Uh, overall, this has the effect of creating a legitimacy for the female form, but doing so on masculine terms. She is compensating for her sex rather than embracing it, uh, and in the end, uh, projecting masculine strength rather than defining her own feminine.